And then, you know, Christmas is a miraculous time of the year. Uh, and there are reasons behind that, the reasons behind that. Um, and, and today we're going to be looking at three special miracles of Christmas. Uh, together we're going to be looking at why this is such a memorable time uh, that God himself came in person to dwell among us and left a mark. He left a narrative, he left a record, he left a history, and why was it? Uh, and after he left, the world changed. Uh, our date is based on the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today being December 5, 2021, is 2021, 2021 years after Jesus came and was being with us. It was such a remarkable time that a split time, B.C. and A.D., uh, that, that life uh, radically was changed. And why is that? And so we're going to begin looking at Matthew 1 and try to capture the narrative, try to capture the story and the account. And so let's read that together. It's on your outline up on the screen. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had, it by, he had in mind to divorce her quietly, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will what? Save his people from their sins. Uh, and here is the, um, uh, the, uh, the cattle as the driver. Uh, in Matthew one twenty three. it says, Well, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Are the sermon outlines out there? Oh, they are. Okay, I just want to make sure that I, I, I got them out of my bag. Amen. Now, we, now, I, I mean, we know this is this is this is a really really big deal. Uh, the issue of Christmas. I mean, very soon in the next few weeks, schools are going to close down. Why? Because of the Christmas season. Uh, I mean, the malls are already decorated. Uh, it's uh, uh, in many countries, it's a national holiday uh, across the world. Uh, and so we ask the question: What's really special? About this season? What's special about the Christmas season? Uh, it's special for at least three reasons. Uh, the Christmas season is a big deal. The wonder, the miracle of Christmas is about who came at Christmas, who he came to at Christmas, and why he came. Who came? Who did he come to? And why did he come? And there are four things that through this account that we see that God wants us to remember, God wants us to capture. This season ought to be the, the blessed time. It ought to be our season. A season where we reflect, a season where, you know, we are grateful, we are thankful, a season where, you know, we, we just capture that, wow. wow. So the four things are the four Ps. It says the big idea, the wisdom key about the, the, the miracle, the wonder of Christmas is that at Christmas, please read that with me, God gave us the precious gift satisfaction. Stop right there. It's about the gift of satisfaction. The gift of satisfaction comes in four Ps. God's presence, God's peace, God's pardon, and what? A purpose for life. God's presence, His peace, His pardon, and a purpose for life. And that wraps up with God's satisfaction. He says, I've come that you have life. God with us. Glory to God on the highest and peace on earth to all men. And the whole message of a Christmas is about God wanting us to live not an overwhelmed life, but an overflowing life of satisfaction, which comes with God with us, God's presence, God's peace in our life, his pardon for all our wrongs, and a purposeful life that starts here after we become his children. And, and what? It climaxes when we see him face to face in heaven where he says, I have a mansion waiting for you. The glory, the gladness, the joy, and all the... The, um, the goodies, the rewards that we would uh, experience when we go to heaven. Amen. So let's delve right into it. The wonder of Christmas. The wonder of Christmas. It's about who came to earth. 
And this is not just about the, 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 um, uh, the Christmas trees. It's not just about the lights. It's not just about Rudolph and, 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 and Santa Claus and all those characters. It's about who came who. And at Christmas time, my brother and my sister, there was an invasion. God invaded our earth. At Christmas time, there was a disruption of the status quo. The way things were and have been, God himself stepped in and changed. And about 20, 21 years, God himself came down. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. He said, what's the big deal about this? Now, the, the, the first time man stepped on the moon, it was a big deal. But it, the, the greater significant deal is when God himself stepped here on earth. And that was the first miracle of Christmas. God came to earth. You say, God, I thought we were talking about the, the, the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Yes, Jesus was God. He said it himself. He claimed to be God. The Bible calls him God. He called himself God. And it proved that by dying on the cross. It says, the sign, the sign that you'll know that I am one with the Father is that on the third day I will rise from the dead. Everybody saw him. Even the people who crucified him. His tomb was empty. Now, here's what the Bible says about this. Note this very well. Let's read that together and read this with, with intention. Read this. It says what? Christ is what? The exact likeness of who? The unseen God. One more time. Christ is what? The exact likeness of the unseen God. He existed before God made anything at all. And in fact, Christ himself is the creator who made everything in heaven and earth. He is the creator of the things we can see and the things we can't see. He is the creator of what? The spirit world with all its kings and kingdoms, its rulers and authorities, all were made by who? Christ. And so the manger was not the beginning of Christ, was not the birth of Christ. It was the introduction of God to earth. And so Christmas, my brother, my sister, is what? It's the time when God came to earth. He is the exact likeness of who? God himself, the unseen God. He existed before God made anything else. And, and, and the Bible tells us that he was his creator God. Jesus, alongside God the Father, created all things. He himself created everything in heaven and earth. He created the things that we see. He created the things that we don't see. He created a spirit world with all his kings and kingdoms, his rulers and authorities. All were created by who? Christ. And so we're talking about creator, God, manifest in flesh. In the person of Jesus. And this is the greatest, one of the greatest miracles about Jesus. Jesus. We are celebrating not the beginning of Jesus Christ, but we are celebrating the day that God himself stepped on earth. And the greatest miracle of, of Christmas is that Jesus came to identify God to us, he came to reveal God's identity. In other words, he came to show us who God really is. He's the exact likeness of the unseen God. Now, you know, and I know that there's a lot of strange things about God. People like to say, well, I like to think of God as this, or I like to think of God as this. It's not my idea of who God is. It's not your idea of God, who God is. You see, it's about who God says he is. And we see and we know who God is by looking at what Jesus said and did. He is what? The exact likeness of the unseen God. And at Christmas, what really matters is that we came to know who God is. And one of the themes that Jesus repeated over and over again from beginning until he left is he came to teach us that God is our father. There is no religion, there is no religion that tells you that God is your father. Every religion, aside from the Christian religion, is about what you do. You are a servant. It's about your works. If you do this, if you work hard, then God is going to have mercy on you. And there's no way how that you can even come close to God. But Jesus came and said, hey, I want to show you who God is. God is your father. God is your father. 
And you want to call him Father. We pray today, our Father who art is heaven. He says, yes, you can have a relationship with God. He is what? Your Father. You can have a father-child relationship with the Creator God, the Almighty God, the one who was and is and is to come, the Great I Am, the Eternal God, the Everlasting Father. He wants to have a relationship. You ought to see God as a relationship Father. He tells you that you're not an orphan. You're not a widow. You are not by yourself. You have a daddy. You have a papa. And he's who? Almighty God. And he's the perfect daddy who is with you. He's with you. And, and here's what Jesus said. Here's what Jesus he says. He says what? He came to reveal the identity of God. And he says this. He tells us in John 10, 30. He says, make no mistake about this. He says, well, I and the Father are what? There's no other religion, no leader, no prophet, no founder of any religion who, who can say this, that they and God are one. <laughs> Glory to Almighty God. And G, I am and the Father, and, and this is the good news, that he came to teach us, he came to reveal to us who God is. He came to reveal to us who God is. And when we see God, when we see Jesus, we see what G, God in action. When we hear the words of Jesus, it is your Father speaking to you. And through Jesus, we learn the identity of God. That we learn that our father is a caring father. That he cares for us. And we see how Jesus lived his life as the caring one. And that this is who your father is. He's caring. He cares for you. Through Jesus, who came to reveal the identity of God, we see that God is compassionate. He is merciful. He is forgiven. And we see that in how we relate it to people with mercy, with compassion, with love. We see that Jesus is close. He came to us. He came to people from all walks. He approached them, the lepers, the, the sinners, all of them. They even called him the friend of sinners. He went where others, other, other religious leaders will not go. He's a close father. He's caring. He's compassionate. He's close. He's also competent. When we see the miracles of Jesus that cause people to open their mouth and testify, we've never seen anyone do this before. It tells us that he can do all this. Your heavenly father, your God is competent. Your God is capable. There's nothing that is impossible with him. He can do all things. And that will give you Hope, that will give you joy. That will cause you to celebrate that what you can do, your Father can do in and through you. Oh, yes. And these are things that we can know about God because Jesus came to show us who God is. He is the exact likeness of the unseen God. And it says, I and the Father are one. When we read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Oh, and you look at Jesus, what do you see? You see God in action. You see your father in action. Here's Jesus going to a marriage feast in John 2. And he asks the question, will, God, will God's presence be felt in my relationships? You bet he is. Yes, you're going into a marriage feast and you speak that God comes to us. He's a personal, relatable God who wants to be part of your relationships with your spouse, with your children, with your grandchildren. And he's the one who's fueling things up and causing his presence oh, to become the glue, the bond oh, that brings people together. Oh, here's Jesus going into the word and there's a problem. They run out of wine. And what does he do? He meets, he solves the problem. And the question is, when I have problems at a personal level, when I have needs, at my individual level, at my home level, at my, at my financial level, at my health level, at my job level, my personal needs when I run out of resources, when I can't meet my needs, is this God able, able to be there? Yes, he is able to meet my personal individual needs. And we see Jesus who came to reveal who God, Abba, Father, the eternal, the great I am is. He came to demonstrate that to us. You see Jesus going to a funeral and he stops the funeral procession. And he said, do you mean that God understands my griefs, my hurts, my confusion, my worry, my pain, my disillusionment in life? You bet he does. And that's how he demonstrated that he went to funerals. He stepped in there when difficulties and challenges most felt in the life of people. Here's Jesus entering a sick room where a little girl had just died. And you say, does he make house calls? 
There's no one that I can turn to or call to. When I'm all by myself, there's nothing I can do. Will this God, will this God be there with me? And Jesus came to demonstrate that. He says, I and the Father are one. I came, I came to reveal the unseen God. And this is what the unseen God, he makes house calls. He comes to you when no one in your darkest hour, and we sang the song, in our darkest hour, God will light things up. He will step into your darkest moment. He will step into your weakness. He will step into your problem. Even when you failed, even when you are fallen, when others will kick you down and gossip about you and say mean and evil things about you, Jesus will get down in the trenches with you, and that is who he is. He came to reveal the invisible God. And he says, I and the Father are one. What I do, what I say, it is how the Father relates to his children. Is anyone hearing this? It, it, does this season become a very important season for you to be reminded that God is my Father? And I know him. I know him. He's revealed himself to me through the person of Jesus, my Savior. Glory to Almighty God. Here's Jesus taking a baby in his arms when people are saying, no, these kids are just bad. Let them go look at Jesus. Says, no, 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 no. Let, let the little ones come to me. You say, when I'm weak, when no one wants me, does God even care about me? Yes, 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 yes. God cares about the lonely, the weak, the outcast, the ones that people say, look, this is just a little boy, little girl. Let them go. We only are interested in the, in the influential, in the rich and famous. No, he knows your name. He knows your name. He's written your name in the palm of his hand. He cares about you. He longs to have a relationship with you. He says, don't let them go. Let them come. For Dias is the kingdom of God. He's interested in your life and my life. And you can know this about your heavenly father he watches over you even the hair of your hair is counted he says not a single one falls without me noticing it glory to almighty god yeah the disciples out there in the darkest of night in a storm the boat is drowned and they know they're going to die and what does jesus do he shows up the darkest of night walking on the storm he says when things have hit the bottom when I hit rock bottom, when financially I can't get out of my financial rut, when sickness is riven in my body, when death has come to me, what can my father do? Jesus is saying, I will be with you during the storms of life. During the storms of life, as David said, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God will not run away from us, but what? He will be with us. He will be with us. Even in the final hour, even in the final moment, when you close your eyes to this world, you will open it to the sweet sweet loving arms of Jesus he says I will come and take you on that final moment of your life you will close your eyes to this world of pain and misery and you open it into the glorious arms of Jesus there will be no suffering in your death there will be no suffering even on the day of your death because when you are absent from this body you will be present with the Lord glory to Almighty God and he demonstrated that by walking on the water walking on the water coming to the disciples disciples in their darkest hour every dark hour every dark night jesus will light it up tell somebody jesus will light up your dark nights jesus will light up your dark nights glory to almighty god he's the god of revival and so the miracle of this season for us is who came god himself came in flesh to us now philip asks he said, you know, you, you keep telling us a lot about the Father. You tell us you and the Father are one. You say the words you speak are what the Father says. And you've really told us a lot about it. So show us the Father. Show us the Father. Let's not get confused here. It sounds like you are, you are the messenger who came to tell us who, who the Father is. Here's what Jesus clarified. Read that with me. Uh, John 14, 8 to 11 and, and, and 7. It says what Philip asked. Read that with me. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. He says, everything I've heard about you, the Father gives us satisfaction. And that's the thing. At Christmas, God gave us the precious gift of satisfaction. When we are close to the Father, when we are connected with the Father, when we are yoked with the Father, we'll be what? Satisfied. Somebody say the word satisfied with me. Satisfied. Our loneliness, the hole in our hearts, our longing, our pain, our stress, our worry, our anguish, our fear will all be solved when we know the Father. When we are close to the Father. And so show us the Father. Lead us to the Father, Philip said. Oh, here Jesus' <laughs> response. 
Jesus replied, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. <laughs> Glory to God. The miracle of Christmas is that God himself came. We know the Father. We are one with the Father. He lives with us. We are in God. You have seen the Father. Glory to Almighty God. Glory to Almighty God. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus replied. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the works you have seen me do. If you had really known me, you will also know who my Father is. From now on, you know the Father and have seen him. Him, you have so glory to Almighty God. Can you believe this? There is no religion in the world that can give you this assurance. Glory to Almighty God. From now on, you've seen God. You've seen him. You've heard of him. He's shown up in your life. The miracle, the sickness, the breakthrough. Who has brought you this far? Who did it? It is God. It is God. It is God. You know him. He's with you. Glory to Almighty God. He's not a distant God. He's right here. You, you've seen him. You've seen his works. You've seen his works. He is true. He is faithful. Glory to Almighty God. Glory to Almighty God. And that's the miracle of this season. From now on, you've seen the Father. He's right here in this place. He's right here in this place. From now on, you know him. Mine, oh, mine, oh, mine, oh, mine. Don't keep looking for him in all the wrong places. Don't keep looking for satisfaction in the battle. Don't keep looking for God. Don't look for God in, in an affair. Don't look for God in clothes. Don't look for God in some fancy thing out there. It's all vanity. He says, you know him. You know him. He's right here with you. If you're a child of God, you've tasted of him. If you're a child of God, you've seen his miracle. You've seen his works. You've seen his breakthrough. His words, his words, his words. The words of Jesus, the promises of Jesus. Glory to Almighty God has been revealed to you. And you know him. You've got him. Glory to Almighty God. know him that's what the angel told Mary and Martha who was out there looking he says where 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 is Jesus when Jesus rose from the dead where is he the angel says why are you looking for the living among the dead why are you looking for the living among the dead he's right here in your he told you I will be with you forever didn't he tell you that why are you looking you are do, do, looking at the wrong places you are looking at the wrong he says if, he, if I went this if I did this if I travel here if I went here then I'll meet God he's right there with you God is not God is not in a building he's not in a car he's not in a home he's not is he real you know him you've seen him by the miracle of Christmas when God came to earth. And Jesus Christ is that reference point that when we see Jesus, the works and the words of Jesus, how loving, how kind, how merciful, how gracious, how faithful, how compassionate, how powerful he is, how approachable he is. Oh, we can have God's presence with us.